Hey guys, I am so excited to announce that the movie that you've been waiting for, the documentary Dr. Patient, is now available for rent or purchase at drpatientmovie.com. Check out the trailer here. When I really knew something was wrong was when I started having trouble walking up the stairs. I was supposed to be grateful and happy and healing and well and thriving, but I did not feel that way. I was so sick. Like always, I wanted to find an answer and I had to figure it out, and I had to figure it out to save my own life. So I dove in. Jill is the leading voice in biotoxin illness and chronic conditions that are driven by toxicity. Oh my gosh, you're dealing with mold? You have to work with Dr. Jill Carnahan. Dr. Jill was the first person that actually began to shed some light on the problem. What I do is listen to the patient and we together talk about what else is possible. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> she saved my life. The deepest lessons and most profound insights come in the suffering, come in the dark moments. Self-compassion is the healing transition that, that shifts something inside of us. It's actually the thing that we need most in order to heal. Dr. Patient. Available now at drpatientmovie.com. Welcome to Resiliency Radio, your go-to podcast for cutting-edge information in science and integrative medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Jill, and with each episode, we dive into the heart of healing with world-renowned experts, innovators, and scientists, all related to how to transform your health and empower you through better living. Uh, today, I have special guest, Dr. Stephen Young. Uh, let me introduce him and then we'll dive right in. Dr. Stephen Young's moonshot goal is to help all of humanity remember the sovereignty of their mental, physical, and spiritual evolution. He serves as a bridge to harmonize the old and the new, the east and the west, the internal and external, heaven and earth. He's a chief alchemist at Amortel. He has directed and supported the healing of over 9,000 patients directly in the last 20 years and over 80,000 people through his online courses. He's a foodie with a goal to eat at the top 50 restaurants in the world and strives to live significantly in an insignificant life. Wow. Love that bio. Dr. Stephen Young, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited just to dive in and, and see what reveals itself. Yes, yes, I love that. And I always like to hear about your backstory. Where did you grow up? How'd you get into this world? How'd you get into sure. optimizing your life and, and your impact in the world? Tell us a little about your story. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was born in Taiwan, like many things made in Taiwan. And at age eight, uh, my parents divorced. And my mom and my older brother came to America, right, with the promise of, you know, land of opportunity. And so my mom really didn't know how to speak any English. She worked like 80 hours a week to make ends meet. And so I was a, a very um, unsupervised child. And so because I was pretty unsupervised, I basically ate like Oreo cookies and chips Ahoy all day and play video games. And so you can imagine that does not produce a very healthy mind and body. Uh -huh. So essentially by age 14, just years of having allergies and inflammation and all kinds of illnesses just from poor nutrition. Um, essentially at age 14, I was like sick of being sick mentally and physically, right? The, like the, the physical illnesses along with the depression and loneliness from again, all those chemicals and just, you know, sort of living, playing video games all day. And essentially at age 14, um, and I've been having these sort of inner voices that guide me since I was five. And so at 14, the voice said, um, there's no difference between you Martin Luther King and Bill Gates, they just think differently. And so I was like, huh, that's interesting. So I embarked on this journey at age 14 to understand how, how to think, right? And so my first book was like Psycho-Cybernetics, which is like how to program the subconscious mind. And um, at age 16, uh, someone gave me the Bhagavad Gita. It was like my first spiritual sort of text. And just, yeah, so in the last 35 years have been studying how like mind, body, and spirit um, are together and how they um, work together to, to make us who and what we are. Um, and along the way, as I picked up official degrees in like biomechanics, um, I have a master's doctorate in, in physical therapy. I, you know, um, have had seven businesses so far. And one of the businesses, I had my own clinic for 20 years where we, 
we had functional medicine, when we had, of course, physical therapy, fitness, massage, nutrition, yoga, like a pretty integrative center. And we, we early on about 16 years ago, started just playing with different technologies. It's like, before biohacking was a thing, we were basically playing with different technologies to speed up healing. And so from 20 years of having um, that clinic and treating over 9,000 patients and playing with different ways to speed up healing from a mind, body, and spirit perspective, that has now birthed a mortal, which is, you know, we make technologies um, that basically does the impossible for people. Um, and then I have some other businesses where we do um, one too many essentially courses to help people sort of restore themselves. Um, and, and luckily I've, I've brought on a lot of um, incredible entrepreneurs to run those businesses. So I'm not in operations. I sort of now guide the vision and curate the sort of the energetics of it. Um, and, and one important story to tell is, um, so you have know, knee deep in science, read ton, I mean, countless journals to understand all the things. Um, however, um, 16 years ago, I went upstairs in my own clinic to get a massage and about a minute after the massage was over, I got a text message. So at the time I was in New Jersey, the person that texted me was in Winberley, Texas. And the text message said, how was your massage? And so I just looked at my phone. And I was like, like, how do you know? I just got a massage. So I just texted her back and her response really changed uh, my life, which was your soul told me. And so that was my first like undeniable experience that beyond the sciences that I was reading, there was some other reality happening that I was not, that I've kind of read about in books, but I have not experienced until that moment. And so really the last 15 years, I've, I've traveled the world to, to essentially study the science of how does one actually talk to someone else's soul and have uncovered um, deep esoteric wisdom that's been around for tens of thousands of years that is now making a resurgence. And, and really right now, my passion is to get that information out into the world. Wow. I'm just saying, wow. Okay. So it's so interesting because obviously I'm very scientific. I have bioengineering background and medical training. And so very, very analytical, but in my own journey as well with my own healing, so much of the power of healing is in the subconscious mind and the programming. I just got done talking to Bruce Lipton, um, mm -hmm. who, of mm -hmm. course, is one of the fathers of some of this biology of belief and, and a lot of that. He was one of the forefronts who first started bringing this to light. And now, of course, it's much more prevalent, his thoughts that he, he shared with the world. But I do believe that this is such a core of the future of medicine. And it's how mm -hmm. do we, um, you know, reprogram that and how do we actually live our lives in a different way? Um, gosh, there's so many ways I want to go, but you clearly had this, um, this incident that changed. Well, there's a couple incidents, about five, just hearing that voice inside of you that said, what makes you so different? Cause clearly you're a successful entrepreneur in so many ways. Um, what do you think about your personality, your soul, your gifts made you such a creative, uh, person to look at all these things and to start all the businesses? Is there a quality or aspect mm -hmm. that you see in yourself looking back that made this possible? It's such a great question. I've been on so many podcasts. No one has ever asked that question. I love it. Um, well, I I don't remember at what age, but at some point I adopted this belief in our beliefs just basically become our reality. I adopted this belief that my future self basically sends me instructions in the now. And so that all of my choices and actions, the big ones, not like I'm going to have a sandwich or a salad. Yeah. But well, the big choices are not coming from desire. It's not coming from, I want this to happen. It's literally, I just, I get these images um, or inner knowings of what to do. And so I believe that that is a, a pretty important element to how I've been able to navigate life and, um, and not only have multiple businesses, but, you know, like when we launched Immortal, I was lucky enough to create my reality where most launching of these big companies where you're raising millions of dollars in, in trying to impact the world. Most people talk about like the grind where you're doing 60, 70, 80 hours. Um, I did not live in that reality. It was, as it was launching, I maybe put in five hours a week. And I believe a lot of that comes from this, this vision um, that was given to me from my future self. And I think the other element is I've always been um, an all in person. Whenever, whatever I put my attention to, it's like a thousand percent. I'm, I'm all in. And so I think it's a combination of those two variables. 
That's beautiful. And I think people can take away some of that because uh, most people probably have a quarter or an eighth or a 10th of that kind of passion and power, but it's almost like a laser, right? The precision of that laser creates this intense, like the surgical instrument really, or whatever else you could do with lasers um, because of the intensity of the power of the focus. And I think that's the power of our mind too. Let's take a side track to Immortal because that's how we met. There was a, a person that we both know well that was in Florida. And I think you had your trailer outside and I went out and tried it. And I've tried all this therapy separately, but not together. How mm -hmm. did you get that idea? Tell people what it is. And um, sure. I'm just super excited about that technology, among others. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, roughly, I think 15 or so years ago, um, the first piece, of, first piece of technology I brought in was just a PEMF machine in my clinic. And so we saw, yep, it definitely helped speed up healing, especially fractures and musculoskeletal injuries. And then eventually I was like, huh, what if I stacked a red and near infrared light panel to be happening at the same time, same time as the PMF? So I literally had like a handyman jerry rig, like a red near infrared light panel as a Murphy bed. So yeah. the patient will lie down on top of the PMF mat and then they fold this light panel above them. And so they're getting both energies at the same time. And again, we saw there was a tremendous synergistic effect of speeding up healing. And then we eventually, you know, in my understanding of physiology, I was like, oh, let's add in hydrogen gas, one of the most powerful antioxidants on the planet. And so when we had those three in combination, we saw remarkable healing effects. I mean, we saw certain people's fractures healed in like two weeks, right? Wow. Given um, this combination, plus of course, proper nutrition and, and all the things. And so roughly about four and a half years ago, um, my business partner at Immortal came to my office. I still had the office back then. And we were actually working at the time on a workstation. That was actually the, the first um, product that we were designing. We, we actually conceptualized this workstation that uh, makes you more healthy while you're on the computer versus the current paradigm is you got to get away from your desk every 45 minutes to move your body. We designed something that you can slouch, it provides movement and it provides spinal support. Wow. And so, yeah, yeah. And so we were designing that in a moment. He came to my office and he's like, hey, what's that thing in the corner? I was like, oh, it's this thing I, I rigged up to help patients heal faster. He's like, can I try it? I was like, sure. So Brian, uh, Brian Leggett, who's an incredible entrepreneur, gets in and 30 minutes later he gets out. He's like, we need to pause everything and make this our first product. Because he knew that what we could do with this would establish the legitimacy of the brand yeah. and then yes. any other product afterwards people be like of, of course you know they're, yeah. they're the they're frontier of this and so fast forward millions and millions of dollars of research later and you know four and a half years of prototyping we now have this immortal chamber um, essentially it's a combination of six different technologies one of which is biological which is the hydrogen gas the other ones are um, energetic or frequency based Right. So we have electrofrequencies, frequencies, magnetic frequencies, sound, vibration, um, of course, uh, light um, that pulses at specific frequencies into your body. Um, and what we've seen is baseline. Everyone gets into the flow state. That's sort of like baseline. They just feel relaxed and calm. Yeah. We've seen anything from that to um, chronic pain disappearing. And keep in mind, all of this is one session, not a series of sessions. Um, we've seen childhood repressed memories memory surfacing processing somatic releasing and crying and integrating um, we've seen roughly 10 percent of people actually will say the experience was the most profound experience of their lives more profound than any psychedelic experience wow and then we've been seeing one person um, an eight-year-old um, girl who has a genetic disorder of low muscle tone which means um, she needed physical therapy right just to move her skeletal muscles better um, and also she needs medications to poop properly because her smooth muscles have low tone. Um, one session later, she ne no longer needs meds to poop. It was cured, basically. Wow. Yeah. And so we've, we've seen some pretty remarkable results. And at this point, um, it doesn't surprise me because in the last, especially few years, the bioenergetic or the frequency-based medicine has exponentially progress we're, we're cause if we study esoterics we we understand that um i always say energy trumps biology yes and so we're, we're basically getting to the root literally the source code of people's illnesses versus the downward symptoms hey everybody i just stopped by to let you know that my new book unexpected finding resilience through functional medicine science and faith is now available for order wherever you purchase books in this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness 
and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. Love that. And I have been such a fan of PEMF. And then when I saw you put in all these things, like I said, I've done almost every one of them separately. I have a hydrogen machine. I have a PEMF mat. I have the infrared. I have, don't have a sound bed, but, but um, so, so, so I know the power. And like you said, I'm seeing in clinical practice that sometimes just a simple PEMF will transform a patient far more than nutrition, supplements, diet, lifestyle. I'm just such a fan. And I think um, I could name a million reasons why. One in particular, so interesting, is just simple blood flow. Like simple blood flow is enhanced by energetic magnetic means and, and all of these things. Then you take hydrogen with the reactive oxygen species. So you started with like two or three of these, and then you kind of expounded and created the six different yeah. um, technologies. Amazing. And like I said, I used your prototype bed on that last year uh, when your trailer was out front of the conference. So it was really profound as well. Um, this, I think, is where medicine is head headed. I, I think yeah, functional integrative and really medicine in general, um, the power is going to be in energetic modalities instead of just pills, um, because those the one size fits all no longer works. Um, so where are you guys taking this? How do you see this? Do you see this in clinics? Do you see people purchasing them themselves? So um, tell me a little bit about what you see sure. this looking like for uh, consumers. Yeah, yeah. And so from a, um, I'll give it, I'll answer that from two different contexts. From a business model perspective, because it is a business, uh, our ideal clientele are essentially clinic owners, right? Doctors, functional medicine doctors, it could be these, you know, now there's like these biohacking centers or longevity centers. Um, those are, from a business model perspective, the ideal clientele. We, I mean, we do have certain wealthy individuals that buy it for their home, but, you know, we made the machine to help the world, not just the select few. Mm -hmm. And that's why we buy it from a business perspective. Um, these clinics are ideal clientele. However, from my future self, giving me information perspective, from a, from a Stephen perspective, um, I was always shown that it belongs in communities. And so there are these tons, hundreds, if not, I'm sure thousands of communities that are being established because people are like, oh, let's all get a plot of land, live together and have like sovereign energy, food uh -huh. source, food supply. What I see is that um, the chamber in a clinic will have a deeper profound effect than any other place because you can imagine if everyone gets in a chamber a day, um, it puts all of their energetic state in resonance. It's almost like making coherence in a community. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know through the Maharashi effect that if a group of people share a similar intent or a similar vibration, now that has an additive effect on the rest of humanity. And so from an impact perspective, the communities are going to be the, the it ideal audience. So. Wow, that's amazing. It makes so much sense again, because so much of healing really happens in community and in conjunction. In fact, again, talking about Bruce Lipton recently, we were talking about the isolation during COVID and how profoundly that affected our biology and how profoundly it affected our health because people were isolated and in community is really where we heal as well. So. Yeah. So I, in your bio and in just your intro, you've traveled all over the world. And what would you say are some of the most profound lessons from that, you know, five-year-old Chips Ahoy video game until now with all the change that you're making, what were some of the big shifts in your consciousness that led to the person you are today? Wow. Again, great questions. Um, profound shifts. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, really... That moment at age 14, the, the the voice that came that said, because I was literally contemplating suicide in that moment. Oh. This voice came and said, you're no different than you know Martin Luther King, Bill Gates. That was a very deeply profound. It, it was just a, an immediate 180 degree shift from like, no one understands me and I don't belong in this world to wait a minute. I just get to think differently and I can create the world that I want. And so in that moment, it seeded the development of this 
new paradigm for me, which is instead of like most people figuring out where do I fit, right? I'm a peg, which which hole am yes, I supposed to yes. fit in the world? I realize, oh no, I just get to create the world that fits me, right? Versus Love that. <laughs> and so that's really been the the overall sort of lessons cumulatively that has strengthened that um, with like legitimate real world results, um, that belief of how do I just understand, know, and embody my frequency and tune that. And then literally I, you know, this is science through the double slit experiment and a lot of things. I then will collapse the infinite wave of probability of existence into a version of matter and situation that is a direct match to my vibration. Right. And so it's really just about understanding your vibration, right? You need yes. to be clear on that. And and you know, that's basically I sum up spirituality and, and all the esoteric things. It's basically it goes back to like, who am I? And just being very clear on that and revealing parts to love even more. And as we do that, we literally, especially through the hermetic laws, which we, we can get into, you can literally code the game of life instead of just being a player in the game. Yeah. Wow. I love that. And I want to just go back to something you said, because I believe there's people out there. I have an audience of lots of chronically complex ill, lots of physicians too. Mm -hmm. But one person I want to speak to in this mm -hmm. moment is that person who's right now, our world is, I keep saying the quotient of chaos is exponentially increasing, right? Like the chaotic uh, curve is, is out there mm -hmm. and, and chaos and, and suffering and, and uh, wars and everything that's, that's difficult and surprising and creates fear is exponentially increasing unless we're grounded in ourselves. So who I want you to talk to briefly is someone like your 14 year old self, where you were literally feeling like I don't fit, I don't belong, I have no value because at the core, believing we are worthy of love and believing we are valued is, is really the start of healing. And you face that and you transform that. What would you say to someone out there who's suffering with illness, feels like there's no hope, life has collapsed around them and they're feeling that same feeling that you felt. How would you uh, speak to that person? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say recognize that um, it doesn't matter what culture or religious belief that you come from. I think everyone can agree that there is a greater force or power beyond just humans, right? There's something greater. I mean, it doesn't matter what that is for you. And so my, my advice would be to deeply feel that that greater force in fact, has been guiding you and preparing you every moment of your life. Like the, the only way for me to do what I can do now is, you know, one of the things that happened to me was at eight years old, I literally witnessed my dad choking my mom to death. And immediately my foundation of safety disappeared. Wow. And because of that, I wanted to understand and learn everything because if I could understand and learn it, control if I can control it, and then I'm safe. And so one could say, right, in traditional language that that was a traumatic event. I say it was a heightened emotional experience because fear was 10 out of 10 in that moment. And then from that experience, I was given the awareness of what deep fear feels like so that I can train myself out of that fear and into the other side, which is sort of love. Yes. And so everything that you are suffering and experiencing Treat it like, okay, what is this greater power? Why am I in this gym, this this virtual gym of feeling this state? And what is the opposite of this state that I get to get to? And that's a very different context than you've been traumatized and you need to heal. That is so profound. And thank you for sharing so deeply because this is people out there need to hear this. And so many people think love and hate are opposites. No, it's love and fear. And you just hit the nail on the head because even as a physician, I know that my number one job is to create a space for optimal transformation for the person in front of me. And the way that I can start is humbly creating a place where they feel unconditionally loved and accepted. And then maybe modeling that because that reflection for themselves back to, because usually um, those fears and feeling unsafe and the lack of love for our own bodies and creations is where the unhealth starts, where the disease starts. So what you just said is so powerful because uh, mm -hmm. actually addressing, battling, uh, embracing that fear and saying, what is this here to teach me, right? Everything's a teacher. 
Um, mm-hmm. So I really, really appreciate that you shared that because I can't imagine your eight-year-old self and what you went through and yet look what it's done to transform you into the human and the the world changer. Your technologies and your inventions are going to change the world for the, for the better. Mm-hmm. That's super exciting. Um, how did you connect with people with the same, because you talked about this energy and I think that's another important lesson is when we put the mm-hmm. energy out, we draw to ourselves the kinds of people and resources. Do you want to share mm-hmm. any stories or um, thoughts mm-hmm. on how we can actually um, manifest those kinds of dreams? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I realized from studying, of course, you know, how the mind works and consciousness works is that our identities is the, they're the strongest um, predicting factors or the strongest variables that dictate what we experience in life. Because as life is happening, another way to say this, we must perceive life in a way that fulfills our identities. Right, because or else we, we would go crazy. And so I used to have the identity of hard worker because I saw my mom, how we were able to like survive in America. She worked hard. And so I was like, oh, that's that's how you do life. And so in the beginning of my sort of, I call it contribution career instead of work. In the beginning of my contribution career, I worked like 80 hours a week. You know, I was like building multiple businesses and I was in it and all the things. And eventually I was like, this is exhausting. And I realized that, got it, my identity of hard worker, of course, makes me work hard. And so I was like, you know what? I don't want to work hard anymore. I want to just problem solve because now I now have a team. I'm going to empower my team to be able to do the work. And if there's any problems, I'll just solve it. In other words, I'll, I'll direct versus doing the work myself, essentially. And so, and that worked. You know, I, I, my, I, when I adopted that identity within a short amount of time, my work hours went back down to normal, like 40 hours a week. And... However, the drawback to that identity was I started having problems in my personal relationships, um, problems with other things, because that identity doesn't just apply to, you know, your your work, it's your identity. And so I was like, oh, I, I don't want pr- more problems in my life. And so eventually I updated it to Harmony Maximizer. And so as a Harmony Maximizer, I must attract harmonious things and make it even more harmonious. And That's when life became infinitely easier and filled with grace. But then eventually from having a pretty easy life, I was like, well, I'm not going to make the difference I wanted to make in the world with this way. And so my newest identity that I'm trying on, and I recommend everyone try on identities and beliefs like t-shirts. You don't want to wear one forever. It would stink. And my newest is great. That's a perfect sound. I love it. (laughs) My newest identity is resonance magnet. Right. And so what that means is I just focus on my resonance, my frequency, and I must magnetize others of the same resonance. And you can imagine if you stick a bunch of magnets together, they become a more powerful magnet that then magnetizes more magnets. And so I've, I've, I've been, you know, that's the current T-shirt I'm wearing. And so it's, it's worked out to attract exactly the most aligned people um, into my life. I love it. You're like a human PEMF mat. <laughs> I'm like, you are. Just, right, right. No, um, so powerful because I remember in 2021, I was sitting in the midst of the pandemic. I'd been writing a book and that was about to come out. And then I thought, you know what? Everybody's on screens. So um, if I want to really reach the world on my um purpose, part of my soul's journey is inspiration and inspiration through personal story, through suffering and really allowing people to understand that suffering can be a teacher. So all Mm -hmm. this to say, I'm sitting meditating and this thought comes, I should make a documentary and I have no clue, right? I have no clue. No, I thought of what I'm doing, but in the next several weeks, all of a sudden manifested producer, director team. And within three months, I had a a very large budget to film the you know, through an investor, but all that came from that um, intention, like the magnetic intention. And and my intention through all this was just how do I become love? How do I truly become that unconditional love that the world needs to heal? And how do I attract those people who are aligned, like you, the resonance magnet, um, that will be believe in this? And and all of a sudden, here we have a movie, and, and all this happened. And to me, it's almost unbelievable because it was so easy. Because I grew up like you in a farm, hardworking community, and it was all about me putting in the effort. And I used to call that the dancing bear. It's like everything happens as long as I'm dancing, but when I stop dancing, nothing happens. But as yeah. we, and I want to speak to those people out there who are listening, because if you're in that hard work thing and you think that all 
comes from sweat and blood and tears. Yes, there's a place for that, but maybe there's a place for you to transform your identity. So how would you speak to someone who says, uh, you know, Dr. Stephen and Dr. Jill, this is fascinating. I, I love this, but I don't know how to do it. How do you transform an identity? Yeah. So I leverage those hermetic laws. And so one of the laws is the law of polarity, which means um, at the base understanding of the law of polarity, everything is opposites, right? There's day, night, black, white, up, down, good, bad. And so, and that polarity essentially is, you can also look at it as, as everything is frequency. And so one way to let go of identities is to simply cancel out the opposite frequencies. And I'll explain what that means. And I'll say that um, if you set the intention to let go of an identity, the opposite of that spell is also being cast, which is you're currently attached to that identity. So you can never set a direct um, goal of non-attachment because you just confirm attachment. And so what you can do in terms of letting go of identities, let's say if you say, I have a a worksheet I can share with you and all the audience that walks you through this, which is you just write down, you know, I am blank, right? I am smart. I am kind, whatever the I am is, which is your identity. And then let's say, let's take smart as an example. If that's your identity, um, you're going to write down um, what's the opposite of smart for you. And that could be st stupid. It could be ignorant, whatever it may be for you. Write down the opposite. And then you're going to write down 10 benefits for both columns, for both identities, the opposite and the, the current. And then, and as you're doing that, what you're doing is you're, you're forcing your consciousness to recognize what I call the totality of reality instead of just half of reality. Because what people may not realize is that when you have an identity of being smart, weak or stupidity has to come with it. Smart people, a lot of times will notice stupidity around them because it's the only way for them to feel smart, right? And so everything comes with this opposite. And so what you're doing is you're just recognizing the benefit of both sides of reality instead of just one side, essentially. And you, you do that cognitively by writing down the 10 benefits. However, we're not cognitive beings. We're literally vibrational beings. And so you want to actually get to the vibrational state of each benefit and how you do this is you read the first benefit of, let's say, being smart. And then you close your eyes, you tune into your physical sensory state. Like, what are you sensing? And then you open your eyes and you read the first benefit of, let's say, being stupid. And then you sense the vibration in the state. And they're typically going to be different. Yeah. And then you just keep going back and forth. You, you know, read one side, feel, other side, feel, one side, feel, other side, feel. And what happens is over time, within a matter of seconds or minutes, they will feel the same or you don't feel anything at all. In other words, those two frequencies, as you tune them, they either are in coherence or they've canceled each other out. You just repeat that process through the 10 and energetically and subconsciously, you are now um, less or non-attached to that identity. Wow, I have not heard of that practice before, but it makes so much sense because you're taking that charge out of it. And so mm -hmm. often I see this and I would love for you to expound, but so often people out there, the anger, the projection, the kind of things that we see, even like say a supermarket aisle or in the road, you know, that rage or whatever those things are, they're coming from a place of denying a part of themselves and projecting seeing it in someone else and then being hateful towards that quality that they think is not part of themselves. But what you're saying is we all have both sides. We all have black and white. We all have good and bad. We all have um, these polarities. And if we can acknowledge both sides, including the side that we think we don't have or that we hate about someone else, then we can mm -hmm. be way more neutral. And actually it creates more loving human being too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, that's why I'm a huge fan of the the process of loving even more parts of yourself. And yes. again, that's just a very different context than healing. And so really is like everything is a mirror. And we, we kind of collectively know this. And, you know, one of my favorite hermetic laws is the law of correspondence. And basically it states as above, so below, as within, so without. And essentially it just means that whatever frequency you are, you basically experience that frequency in your external reality. And so if we were to make that into a concrete situation, um, for example, no one ever makes us angry. What What's the languaging really is the anger in me is causing this experience that you are mirroring 
for me to become awareness of that anger that's already in me. Because if you did not have that frequency, you cannot experience it in your reality, right? It's like it's like a radio dial. If you're, if you're not tuned to 87 hertz, you, you, you don't hear 87 hertz on the radio. And so that embodiment gives people ultimate responsibility, but yet ultimate power to decide what are the parts and frequencies that are coming up in response to an external situation and know that it's coming from themselves and then giving them space to feel that, right? Like if you're feeling angry, give yourself space to feel it. And then after you can fully feel it and, and sort of process it, then you can love where did that come from? Where did that, where was the root of that? So. This is so profound because I've, I've been teaching a lot about loving all the parts of ourselves. And that's such a key to healing because usually even think about the simple metaphor of autoimmunity, it's attack of self, it's self-hatred at the core, right? There's so many, and Goro Mate brings that work to light. And you're saying the same thing. There's these parts of ourselves when we, and then uh, Schwartz does part work and all these psychosomatic um, practices that are really about this integrating all parts of ourselves and accepting and loving all of our parts of ourselves I really like that. So hermetics, um, I've heard that term. I didn't ever hear it described as this. Where would you tell someone if they want to learn more? Because this is fascinating. Is there books, leaders? Um, where did you get some of the knowledge? Do you have any, um, you said you have a, a sheet, so we can send people to your website too, if you have any information. Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, that was um, basically around 13 years ago, I stumbled upon the Kybelion, which is sort of like an entryway book to understand um, the hermetic laws. But since then, I've read I don't know, probably hundreds of books. Any book on, about hermetics, I've, I've tried to get my hands on, even ones from like 100, 200 years ago that are old, that you like buy, yeah. And one way to describe it is um, when you read, let's say, the Kybelion, it's like reading Plato or reading Socrates. It's not like Ikea instructions or like uh -huh. in books, we just go read it and I'll just do this. It was all coded. It was every sentence in the book has infinite layers of depth for you to contemplate on, right? Wow. And so um, for people that are just getting into it, that's a great book to start. Um, I will say that I did create a course where I've distilled my you know, last 13 years of studying it into common day language so that you can take in those codes that I've deciphered immediately and immediately apply it to life. And so that I, I do have that. Where does that live? Let's tell everybody because we'll be sure and leave that in the show notes too. Yeah, um, I can I can like provide a link right now. It is, um, I just finished the course three months ago and I've been just given my my inner circle of friends access. I haven't like officially launched it yet, but I, I can, I can, I'm sure I can make a link for everyone. We can share that out. And we'll be sure just to share your website and whatever's coming up so that people can kind of follow. That's fascinating. So important, I think, as we, and I think now people are more conscious of the fact that the beliefs and the identity do control who we are, how we manifest our disease. Um, can you think of any, um, maybe examples you've been uh, running some clinics and things of how this change, maybe you saw a patient or you saw a client where, um, the change in their belief and their identity actually changed their health. Yeah, I can, I have tons of those examples. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I remember I had a patient that came in and she really came in for, um, hip pain. She was in the, in the physical therapy department and, you know, and as I was working with her, I always like to get or get a full, not only medical history, but like life history. You know, in, in medical school, we're taught like, they're your patients. You want to stick to like the thing. And ever since I was a student, um, I, I never believed that. I was like, no, I want to get to know the human, like yes. the entire, not just the case. And so I was just, you know, speaking to her about her general health. And she had mentioned that um, six months prior to seeing me, that she was diagnosed with high blood pressure insomnia and like pre-diabetic and so she put on three different meds and as she was saying this to me and you know this is um, coming from some of my practice of how does one talk to another soul and, and i can uh, i'll pause and science that so um a lot of our junk dna the dna that does not make protein we know makes biophotons right we basically are light beings light emitting beings tricked into thinking we're just biological beings and those light particles that are broadcasting away from ourselves 
carries data, just like fiber optics. And so essentially every thought, every emotion, every experience in this lifetime that you've had is being broadcasted away from you through your biophotons. And we now know with recent research that we have DNA receptors for these biophotons. So literally we have receptors to um, receive that data. And so this is a very science way of explaining how does one communicate with someone else's soul, like their, their inner knowing. And so now I'll jump back to the story. And as she was saying how she was diagnosed, immediately had this inner knowing that something happened to her three months prior to that. So I just asked, I was like, hey, you know, three months prior to being diagnosed, what happened? I don't even think I finished. I didn't even get to finish saying happened, maybe just the part. She's like, my husband died. Oh. And so essentially, uh, to make a long story short, I helped her reprocess the story behind uh, from losing her husband to actually gaining more access to her husband. Uh -huh. And just to give people um, background, she's from the Hindu religion. So they believe in, you know, reincarnation, they have a different belief system in the West. And I knew that. And so just kind of writing her cultural, spiritual um, frameworks and helping her realize that she now actually has more access to him because in his physical body, he was really home. He was like a consultant to travel all the time. And she can still feel him. And I was like, oh, you, you actually have more access to him because you're not limited by his physical body that may be elsewhere. And just helping her reframe that helped her um, shift all that grief into appreciation. And months later, all of her symptoms disappeared. Wow. And, and again, it goes back to the belief, the identity, all these core, core concepts that really do manifest in the physiology so yeah. fascinating. Um, I'm so excited about what, the work you're doing with Immortal and all the many, many, many things that your future self will still continue to share with the, the world in this present day. Um, what's any new exciting things on the horizon that you can share with us as far as where you see um, technology heading or your entrepreneurial skills? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so just to give context, in, um, in December of this past year, I was in Colombia I'm on a spiritual pilgrimage with the Kogi. The Kogi are the indigenous people that have lived in um, Colombia for thousands of years. And essentially when the Spanish went and conquered um, Colombia, they, instead of fighting, they basically just fled up the mountain and to live by themselves. So they've lived without Western influence for like thousands of years. And these shamans are called the Mamos um, are deeply spiritual and deeply connected people. Um, just to give people an idea, they spend, they begin their training at age five. And from age five to age 12, for seven straight years, they live in a cave in complete darkness 24-7 for seven straight years. That's how they're able to tune into the subtle senses beyond our five human senses. And so they can definitely communicate telepathically. They can definitely communicate with the energies of the cosmos, Mother Earth, and all these things. And so it was a, a profound experience to go on the spiritual pilgrimage with them where we went to these sacred sites to give offerings to planet Earth because planet Earth is basically saying, Mother Earth is saying, look, um, you humans have been extracting from me for so long. It's it's time for me to, to restore myself. Now, this can go both ways. Mother Earth says, um, if you don't stop the extraction and change how you think, I'll take it upon myself to restore myself. But that's going to be at the expense of human lives because we would experience natural disasters as mother earth reorients herself or we can take it upon ourselves humans to stop the extractive ways and to change our thoughts away from fear and fight towards love and acceptance and unity and so um, i see beyond exponential rise in energy medicine of course, in AI and how we get to curate AI and even just how businesses are being done, right? Um, we were just talking about earlier upstairs that just a few years ago, people were still in that mindset of like, how do I grow my business? How do I get more money? Now that the predominant talk is how do I give everything I, I have away in order to help humanity? Yeah. And so there's this massive shift in mindset. It's exciting to live in this time. We literally in where I was listening to this, you're living in the greatest time of human history. You're going to see the most profound changes for the benefit in human history. Yes, I, could, I couldn't agree more. And whether it's uh, exponential increase in chaos or just progress, <laughs> it's just, it, it maybe that's maybe just perception, right? But I'm, I'm acknowledging that I'm saying that, but it's probably just perception. of <laughs> Amazing. Dr. Stephen, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for sharing your world. Um, if you're thank listening, you. you want links, we'll make sure and link up to your website. Um, Thanks again for your time.
You're welcome. You're welcome. It was so fun.